Hello. It was my birthday two days ago and I didn't even realise it was July until somebody wished me happy birthday. <laughs> and anyway, look what's just turned up today. I'd made a video about um, for YouTube at the weekend about uh, how I can't be bothered to cook and uh, I had like a three ingredient um, recipe for making basil and green lentil pate and that was just about my limit these days. I used to have a huge business, an organic herb and spice business and uh, food was my life. I was inventing recipes and blends all the time but uh, not anymore. <laughs> these days I'm all about being convenient, easy and fulfilling. So I was having a chat on Facebook with my old mate Spike, she's one of my oldest friends, and uh, oh, we were talking about food, as always. <laughs> and uh, I was talking about how I can't be bothered anymore, and um, that uh, I was thinking about getting a slow cooker just so I could put everything in all together at once. But I hadn't done that because I'm a vegetarian and I thought really slow cookers were just for joints of meat or um, for you know overnight meat dishes. But I started having a, a mooch around on Google and I found some quite exciting recipes for vegetarian dishes done in a slow cooker. So I thought, oh, I might give it a go. Um, so the next day, yesterday, I, uh, I was in the charity shop having a bit of a mooch. And there's always the bottom shelf full of old sort of, you know, a kitchen gadgets that people never use the first time, never mind the second time around. And once they've been knocked about a bit. <laughs> And of course there was a slow cooker um, and I thought, oh, I'll have a look, I'll have a, I'll not, I might be tempted. So I bent down and reached out to touch it, but it was a bit sort of sticky, it, it was a bit tacky and I thought, oh God, that's had years of manky old shanks of ham or something, like a ham shank boiled away in it overnight in some dirty old kitchen. <laughs> some dirty old meaty kitchen. Uh, so I would go to call Spike and say, have a look at this, shall I get it? But I didn't because I just thought, no, I'm, I'm definitely not going to get it. Oh. But it's a very good job I did not buy it because my old mate Spike has been on the internet in the night and she's bought this for me for my birthday. Spike. So I'm absolutely delighted. A lovely man came and delivered it today. I saw him drop it down the street and it rolled down the road when I looked out the window. <laughs> he was a very nice man and there's absolutely no damage done whatsoever. He didn't mention the bouncing, but uh, he was a lovely man and a fantastic gift. So I'm really excited. I've already got an idea for a recipe that I'm going to make now and I'm going to share that with you um, because I was going to put it all in a pan this morning but I just thought I can't face the mess and the faff so um, here we go I'm over the moon I can't wait to get started convenient easy and fulfilling chickpea uh, uh, <laughs> see I'm too excited to speak here we go come on let's go there we go I'm ready for action. I've washed it, washed the pot and the lid and it's absolutely the perfect size for vegetarians because you're not going to try and ram a bird in there or shove a pig's leg down it. Um, it's ideal because what I'm going to make is something called Punjabi Charlie. And that is two tins of chickpeas, three monkey lemons from the back of the fridge, wizened is fine, two vegetable stock cubes, magic ingredient fenugreek, that's the spice. I told you I was that kind of person, some instant garlic puree in a tube. <laughs> I really can't be bothered to cook. And just to prove I really can't be bothered, so can't be bothered, I think ahead. I caramelise my onions all in one go. <laughs> and then I put them in lumps, portions, and freeze them.
I just put one stock cube in. In the end, I'm going to taste it as I go, see if that's enough, because I don't want it to be too salty. So just one, my favourite one. Caramelised onions, I'm going to put two lumps of those in. Oh, it smells good already. <laughs> One, two, and a half for luck. Okay, make sure you dribble a bit of garlic out of the tube onto the bench to make sure it's really messy and stinky. I'm going to put in not too much. Just about that much. That's probably about two cloves worth, maybe? That'll do. Then I'm going to put all of those lemons, the three lemons, cut in half. Skins and all, I've washed them into the pot. For real. Delicious. Oh, it's so fragrant. And the fenugreek is a really fragrant herb too. So that combined with the lemon and the garlic just it's like the food of gods. Now I'm going to cover it with water. Sorry it's a bit dark. It's July and um, we've had a weeks long heat wave but now it's winter because it's England and uh, that's just a fact. So I'm going to cover that with water, I'm going to give it a stir and then I'm going to turn it on. Wish me luck. Here I go. Okay it's all stirred. It smells divine already but I'm gonna try it on high I think I'm gonna try it on high because that's cold also so hi is it on it's on it's plugged in I switched on oh I heard it do something Okay, I'm not going to stand and watch it for 12 hours. <laughs> Maybe one hour? No, okay, that's enough. So I'm going to leave it and uh, come back and have a peep. Okay, see you later. How exciting. It's one minute later. <laughs> it's definitely working. I just touched it very, very lightly and it's warm. But don't touch it. I'm not advising you to touch it. Just stay away from it. Trust that it's on. It's definitely working. While we're waiting, I'll tell you the story about Punjabi Charlie. Uh, he wasn't a boyfriend of mine, as much as I would have married him on the spot, because he was so beautiful. But uh, it was actually a dish invented by uh, a restaurant that used to be over the road or over the canal from where I used to live in Docklands in London. I lived there most of my life and um, it was when I had my herb and spice business. So I was just so busy that I couldn't, I couldn't cook for myself even though I was surrounded by food. So I used to go to this restaurant at least two or three times a week <laughs> and just have my dinner every night. And uh, one of my favourite dishes from there was called Punjabi Charlie. And what made this dish so special was fenugreek. It's a ground spice. You can you can have the seeds whole uh, or you can use the leaves. It's called methi. Um, but I prefer it's ground because it's just easier to use. And the flavour is unique. You can't really compare it to any other spice. You can't say, oh, it tastes like so-and-so or it's just like something else. It's lemony. It's highly fragrant, it's deeply aromatic at the same time, and uh, once you're hooked, that's it. You can't live without it. I certainly can't live without it. And my mouth's watering now. <laughs> so the fenugreek combined with the, uh, the garlic and the lemons and the uh, caramelised onions, it just creates the most divine combination. So served with chickpeas, really they're the carrier but they're the perfect texture as well and right at the end you stir in some well they use cream but I 
trying to look after my old heart. So I stir in Greek yogurt and it, it actually makes it even nicer because it adds an extra tang dimension. And uh, I've said before, I love a tangy, sort of tangy, vinegary tart food. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. How long, how long does this thing take? <laughs> Hello again. It's the next day. And as you can see, they're not in the slow cooker because it's not the slow cooker's fault. It's entirely mine. I think what I did was put in too much liquid. I put in too much water. And by the time it came round to bedtime, they just started a bubble. It smelled incredible. It was going great guns. It was going to be fantastic. But I can't go to bed and leave the plugs in. Never mind leave a slow cooker on. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see I had to take them out of the slow cooker just as they were getting you know comfortable and I put them in a pan and I gave them a blast on high heat and I just boiled them until all the liquid reduced down into like a thick sauce like a gravy and I'll give you a look see can you smell mm. <gasps> It's just like a blast of lemon and fenugreek. Oh, delicious. So you leave the lemons in. So after I'd got the, the liquid down to about half the level of the chickpeas, I turned the heat off, left the lid on and left them overnight. Leave the lemons in. If you're like me, you keep tasting all the way through and don't be put off because the fenugreek is very bitter until it's cooked and until it's sort of rested so don't worry that you think oh this is going to be too bitter for me it's always better the next day and the fenugreek just takes time to relax really when you're ready to serve them take all the chickpeas out of what's left of the lemon uh, husks and remove the lemon husks altogether just take them out of the pan leaving the chickpeas Make sure you get all the lemon and the chickpeas out of the shells. The shells, you know what I mean. The halves. Just put them aside. There we go. There we go. All the lemons are out. And you're left with this. Quite thick. And if you taste it, it is very lively. I mean, I could just eat the whole lot like this. I could just spoon it in. And to be honest, I have been spooning it in. <laughs> Every time I've gone to check on it or stir it or walk past it, I'll have a bit. <laughs> so um, two tins of chickpeas and the ingredients that I just showed you would have been enough for four servings. But now this is probably just enough for two because I've already eaten half on the go. <laughs> If you want to freeze it, it freezes brilliantly. Freeze it like this. So put it into individual portions and freeze it as it is. If you can't wait to eat it and you don't want to freeze it, you're going to prepare your rice and maybe some spinach or um, broccoli Green vegetables go really well with it, like a, a, a spinach dal is perfect. And then when everything else is ready, heat this up again and then stir in lots of Greek yogurt so you get a sort of a creamy, very runny type dal sauce to go with it, with, which goes perfectly well with the rice and the spinach. Um, I'm going to freeze some and then I'm going to make some for later. So I'll show you the finished product any minute now if I don't eat it all before I get it made. <laughs> I've redeemed myself a little bit. I've got one for the freezer and one for my dinner. 